Hey guys, welcome back to Data with Dominic and welcome to this next video in our PySpark uh, Databricks series. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at how to, how, how you can create tables in your Databricks uh, by a, a Spark environment. So diving right into the demonstration, just to give you an idea of what tables are and how they uh, fit in with the entire Databricks uh, a collection of data objects that they have. There's a great article from Data Databricks itself, which I'll link to in the description of this video, which you can check up, check out. And then they basically give you the the hierarchy of uh, data objects in the Databricks lake house, right? So, what we're interested in today is tables, which are basically a collection of structured data, and a, del a delta table stores data as a directory of files on cloud object storage and registers table metadata. To, to the meta store within a catalog and schema. Uh, so basically what they're trying to say is that uh, it's it allows you to store your data in a structured manner. That is, it has uh, rows and columns and it uh, enforces uh, some schema across the table. And there are two kinds of these tables in Databricks. We've got managed and unmanaged. Managed means uh, Databricks hosts both the metadata and the actual uh, data that resides in the table. Whereas in unmanaged, it manages only the metadata and you have basically like a flat file or something with which you connect to the uh, Databricks using a location path or something like that. And it just sort of, uh, it's a, the metadata gives acts as a wrapper and gives this underlying uh, unstructured data the appearance of being structured. And whereas for a managed table, it is also stored, uh, the data itself is also stored in an unstructured manner usually in parquet format and then the metadata sort of gives it the wrapper or an appearance of being structured with columns, rows, schemas, constraints and things like that. But in the case of managed uh, tables, both the metadata and the data are managed by Databricks in the cloud. So that's a little bit of theory. Let's dive into just how you can create these uh, tables right away. So I'm in the Databricks community edition and I have a video on how you can set this up so that you can access and work with PySpark for free. I'll link to that in the top right corner of the screen. So now to create your table first, what you need to do is to go into data. All right. Once you're in data, there's two sections, right? Database tables and Databricks file system, which is basically uh, components of the lake house, right? You have your, uh, you have your structured data and then you have your semi-structured and unstructured data. So when we want to create tables, obviously it's in the database table section because it's structured data. And then we can hit create table here. Once we hit create table, we can either upload a flight or we can, uh, or we can work with data that is stored in the DBFS, that is the unstructured section of the lake house but i'll show you how that's done a little later on but for right now we'll start with just uploading a flat file from your local system and then we can go into how we uh, create tables from uh, data that is in your lake storage or your unstructured storage that is the dbfs in databricks so we can hit this create table with ui choose a cluster that you've got running and then hit preview table so it takes a bit of time we can just call it sample table or something, something simple. Uh, and then, yeah, basically it, it gives you sort of this pro, uh, 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 graphic rich uh, table editor to help you create the table and you can see the data types and the column names and stuff like that. So first thing obviously that we've noticed is we want to promote the first row to header. And also we can see this ID column, which is being read by read as a string. We want it to be an integer so we can infer schema. And it's detected that file type is CSV, colon, delimiters, uh, comma, all that is fine. And also just to note, right now it's being created, this table is being created in the default database. If you've created more uh, databases, you can choose to create this table in those other databases as well. So normally now, if you just wanted to create tables, uh, from flat files that you've uploaded or something like that, you can just hit create table here. But I'm going to go create table in note to show you the code uh, that basically enables us to do this. 
So once you've hit create table in notebook, it brings you to this sort of code that they've set up and they are, uh, they've given us. So now what we can do is we can just uh, go through the code. Basically they're telling us the file location, CSV, then all the options we selected in first schema, first rows, header, true, delimiter, set. And basically it's reading that file we uploaded into a data frame and then it's displaying the data frame for us. So that's just an introduction. And the actual crux of the table or cru crux of the process comes now. So once you have this data frame created and you can create this data frame from files which you had in your lake storage and you can watch uh, some of the past videos in this playlist which shows you how to import data into the lake house, how to uh, work with data in the lake house and stuff. And in the end, once you've reached it to the data frame, then the process for writing a table is the same for pretty much any data object or any uh, source data object that you want to write to a table in Databricks. So once you have the data frame created, then you just need to do a create or replace temp view and then specify a name. Here we're using a variable to hold the name first and then give it, but uh, we don't need to do that. We can just put a direct string with quotes in there. So create or replace temp view. And we've, so we've created a temporary view with the name mock data one dot underscore CSV. And then we can just check that with SQL to see that it's working. And then once we've decided to write it to a permanent table, now that we're happy with everything uh, that's uh, been done so far, we can set a permanent table name and we're going to leave that as sample table because that's what we had put in the uh, graphic editor earlier on. And this, this statement is the most important. So in the end, we're just going to be writing uh, this sample table. We're going to be writing this data frame to a permanent table using the save as table command. And the table's name in the database will be permanent table name, which is a variable that's holding the sample table string. So we're going to create a table called sample table in the database. So we can just go up and hit run all. Data one seems like a really bad name. All right, so as you can see, that job has been completed. And we can confirm that the table has been created by going into the data tab. And then we can see this sample table here. So once that's done, how we can just test to see if that's working is we can maybe create a new notebook, call it table test. It's running with the same cluster, which is important because your table will be only created in one cluster and it will remain with that cluster. So now to test uh, that the staple is working, we can use SQL. So since it's a Python notebook to access or uh, to make SQL available to us, you have to do this percentage SQL and then we can do a select star from sample table. And then we hit shift enter to run. And yep, that table is working for us. So that's how we create a table in the Databricks PySpark environment. And it, we basically saw two ways to create a table. So the first way was to upload a graphic, uh, to upload a flat file and then use the graphical editor to create the table. And then we could just directly create the table with that create table button. Alternatively, uh, if we have already existing files in the lake section on structure data section or DBFS section of our Databricks environment, we can uh, create a notebook and reach that data into a data frame. Once we have that data in a data frame, we can just create a temporary view. And then once we have that temporary view, we can write that data frame uh, and use 
the save as table functionality to create a permanent table in the database. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment and hit the bell icon and we'll see you in the next one.